Yeah, man. Getting this thing started. How would you describe what it is exactly that you do? It's a good question. The main thing that I do is I am a healer. That's the main thing. Meaning I am an alchemist and I like to teach people my methods and my ways through meditation so they can also heal so they can come back to their original self, you know, their true self. That's the main thing that I like to do. I also like to talk about the universe a lot. So that's mm -hmm. another thing, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's mainly just alchemy. And are these methods ways that you healed yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. I feel like that is the path of the healer is they heal themselves or the path of the shaman maybe is, yes. uh, you know, they partake on the journey themselves to heal their own wounds. And then once it is said and done, if you want to say said and done, maybe work in progress still. But once you get to a certain part in the journey, it's like, well, I got to give back. I, I kind of know this stuff. I learned these modalities and practices myself. And I see other people struggling. I feel as though I need to give back. That's personally speaking. Um, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. And I know that, like, I'm sure that you've gone through the same thing. You know, when you go through a spiritual awakening, it can be something very intense, um, especially, you know, going through dark nights of the souls and things like that. So I believe also that my content will bring, uh, will provide more comfort for people, especially right now, because there's there's so many spiritual awakenings going on especially at this moment mm -hmm. that there's going to need people that have already gone through it like you or me uh, and that have already you know elevated in some type of way to bring comfort to the people because um it's an intense process yeah yeah mm -hmm. for sure yeah it's a miracle that we do have other examples that have paved the way yeah I mean, I give credence to the masters, like the yogic masters of the past, these guys that did it way before the internet. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, right. Like yeah. that is exemplary in itself. Like these guys that just did it before really uh, there was any resources, you know, the original Dharma, the OGs of Dharma. Yeah. I give credence to those guys. Yeah, they did pave the way, you know, the ascended masters. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, by the man. way, they're here as well. <laughs> they're here. Yeah. Yeah. That's what people say, right? They're here yeah. in a spiritual form or also in an embodied form. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let me hit you with this one. How would you define what exactly a spiritual awakening is? Mm, that's a good question. To me, spirituality is everything, meaning everything is spiritual first mm -hmm. and then it's physical but even physical is spiritual yeah spiritual awakening is just returning to spirit meaning understanding that there's more to this life this 3d life mm -hmm. than meets the eye something more than ourselves and at the same time a connection that we have to god basically so yeah. it's more of like the connection remembering our, that we have a connection to a higher power yeah well said yeah. very succinct yeah it's realizing that there's way more than just the 3d material yes. realm um going on you know more than just the wants and aversions of our body way yes. more than that way more than just yes. trying to earn a paycheck <laughs> yes yes exactly yeah. i mean that's what i do what i do because um i've just been told by you know what we call spirit guides and, and things like that, that uh, my mission is to do what I'm doing. That's mm -hmm. why I'm receiving my abundance and I'm receiving a lot of, you know, subscribers and things like that because I'm supposed to be doing this. This is what my soul set out to do. And that is one of the things that I'm trying to teach, um, you know, light workers, anyone that's, you know, in a spiritual journey as well, is that you have a reason why you're here, right? It's not just, you're just, of course, you're here. We're also here to experience being a human, right? We're ex we're here to experience duality. We're here to experience, you know, eating food as a human, watching movies, things like that. You know, I still enjoy my human life, right? Mm -hmm. But we also come here with a purpose, you know, and especially around these times 
when uh, the collective consciousness is, is rising, we need people like you and me that are here to help elevate that as well with our own truths, because everyone has their own truth, right? Yet at the same time, everyone's truth is kind of similar because, you know, sacred geometry and things like that. Yeah. But yeah, that's also one of my, my messages is to try to be able to get people inspired enough, right? To heal some of their blockages so they can move on to what their purpose is or they can find their purpose. Because there's a lot of people that have like, what are going to do what we're doing, you know, go on YouTube or have social media and things like that. But then there's other people that are just needed. There's Their energy is just so such of high, high vibrations that they're just needed here, right? And with that is, is enough, right? So mm -hmm. it's up to the person to find out for themselves by digging in deep uh, with their inner self. Yep, amen to that. And that yeah. leads me uh, to my next question. How do you recommend we uh, get on this path or this wavelength? You know, how do we embark upon this journey to oneself? Um, would you say just like a general meditation practice or something like that? Meditation is the gateway to the spiritual, but there are different ways of getting into a meditation zone, right? Which is like a Zen zone. Mm -hmm. You can do the regular way, which is lotus position and or just laying down. But there's people that have pendulums that can do that as well. The people that have hypnosis techniques, and that is also a form of meditation. Um, or praying is also a form of uh, meditation. So honestly, to me, it, it really would just depend on the person because everyone has their own truth. And it is all about a journey of discovering of self, right? Of course, it's about oneness and Christ consciousness, of course, you know, but it's also a journey of discovering yourself, discovering how everything in your own life uh, connects to your purpose basically right connects to who you are your personality the things that you like the color like your favorite color all of those things connect in the spiritual because in spirituality there is no there's random does not exist everything connects so mm -hmm. it's a it's a discovery of self right and you know i'm sure you've had it too where you've been um in your spiritual awakening you've had aha moment about things like, oh that's right that connects oh that's right you know and that's the you discovering yourself again, basically through evolution while releasing your blockages, right? Coming back to to God again, coming back to to oneness again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Is that what it's all about? Coming back to God? It is about evolution. It is about evolution. This is why we are here. At least from what I've been told and the things that I know personally, of course, everyone has their own truth. But what I've been told and my knowing is we come here, not we come here firstly to experience. That's the first thing. Yeah. Is we come here to experience what it is to be human, what it is to not be God, basically. Mm. What it is to be, uh, feel less. Because when you're with God or on the other side, there's only love because God is love. So you are a part of the love energy. We are love as a soul, right? So when we come in here into this dimension, we come in here to experience that which we are not, which is fear. That's why this dimension is ruled by the energy of fear, right? Everything that we do here is our motivation is through fear. Even when we were, were first born, we, we get slapped in the butt. And we start crying that's a form of fear right that's a form of trauma right so yeah. we come in here to uh experience that basically right and eventually through our life cycles and it would i guess it would just depend on the soul but we come in here to get traumas um even do bad things sometimes it's true we do these things and that's what we call karma and eventually through our life cycles of being here we evolve, right? Technically, we're not really evolving. We are just remembering, right? Uh -huh. But we're evolving through healing the traumas that we have gotten, even from past lives and past generations, right? That's why a lot of us now 
have so many traumas that we don't even know where they come from. It's because they come from past lives, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But we're here to uh, release those, right? Release those traumas and come back to ourselves again, which is come back to God or evolution. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well said. So I feel that as well. It's about mm -hmm. um, the evolution of experience yes. or the remembering of who you are. And that is the evolution of experience, I guess you could yeah. say in another way. Yeah. So evolution of experience. So pretty much what we're doing is creating a better experience for ourselves as time goes on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. It's almost like we're creating a better game or a better movie as time goes on. Exactly. Exactly. And if yeah. some people have a hard time with that as well because of the traumas that they have endured here. Right. But eventually when, you know, when you come back to yourself again, either through really deep meditation um, or even just having a near death experience, you get to come back to the truth, which is love. And you understand now that whatever you experienced was temporary and it was basically but a blip of a second on the other side and you experienced it to gain wisdom, right? Because wisdom on the other side is like almost like a currency in a way. And this is what oh. I've been told. Mm. Um, it's almost not really like a currency, but it's like looked up to, right? That's why we have ascended masters and we have these storylines of, mm. you know, cycles and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's one of the main reasons we come in here to learn wisdom. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And then on to the next thing so do you feel as though we get we wise up um we get a certain amount of merit you could say a certain amount of uh wisdom coin <laughs> and yeah. then um we ascend to like a different sort of experience whether that's in the human form or some kind of angelic form it's like a transfiguration of our form through wisdom yes yes 100 yeah. percent yeah yeah i feel that like too. uh yes yeah like because this is the confusing part i guess um because on the other side time is not real it's just an illusion so everything that has happened has already happened right so technically your infinite soul that you have has infinite experiences and you're eternal but we everything is also experience on the other side so you can also have the experience of forgetting that you are infinite and just have a certain storyline for yourself. So that's where evolution comes from. Like the next, now you're going to evolve into an ascended master. Now, now you're going to evolve into this and this. And that's just a storyline that you're experiencing. But technically, yeah, we're connected to everything and we're infinite, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's powerful stuff, man. And then yeah. eventually we become back to god again yes so yes. this all all roads lead to that yeah. yes yeah. and then yeah. my logical brain wants to go well then what does it restart <laughs> you know? yeah right i don't think yeah. anyone can explain that but yeah. yeah i do feel that pull that pull back to the one you could say pull back mm -hmm. to the greater self it seems yeah yes hmm Yes, and the and you know the greater self is God, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that's what is, and you know that's also part of the spiritual awakening is just um, getting closer to God and understanding that God is you and and God yeah. is with, with within, mm -hmm. right? So and even for me, like I'm experiencing my abundance and everything, but. I'll still have doubts because I'm still a human, right? I'll still mm -hmm. have fears. I'll still have doubts. I'll still, like, man, hopefully I'm I'm helping these people because that's that's from the bottom of my heart. I want to help as many people as I can, but it's but sometimes I doubt myself. Is, am I the right person for the job? Am I doing this? Am I, you know, things like that. But that, the thing about the beautiful thing about meditation is that you can always come back to your soul again, right? No matter how much you doubt and no matter how much the negative gets to you, you can always come back to God. And God is always going to tell you the truth that, 
you're loved, that you are eternal. This is an experience for you to gain wisdom. And the more you move from love, the more you're going to attract abundance. It's it's very, very simple. It is simple. It's so simple. Yeah. Hidden in plain sight. Yeah, man. Um, it's so simple. It seems unbelievable, especially, like I said, to the logical mind, the rational mind. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. Like God is always mm. with us, always will be and always was. Mm. You can always tap in. I didn't believe it. If I heard myself saying that 10 years ago, I'd slap myself in the face. Maybe, what are you talking about? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Come on, look at the world. How could you think yeah. there's a God? But yeah. that's the thing is when you look to the outside, when you watch Fox News a little too much or something like yeah. that, when you yeah. look to the outside for God, you're never going to find it there. I mean, you could yeah. say everything is God, so you could. But I feel as though in order to have a self-realization of God, you have to look within first and then you look yeah. without and you can see the guru and everything without. You know, you have to find the guru within first, sad guru within, and then you can find it without. It doesn't work the other way, I feel like. No, no, not, the God is never outside of us. God is always uh, within. That mm. You have to go within. And that's the difficult part, part for people because, I mean, if you see someone talking to themselves, right, and but they know what they're doing, they're channeling or they're talking to God, they're doing something spectacular, right? But another uh, people will look at that person like he's crazy. Yeah. Right or he's delusional. What is he doing? Talking to himself. That's weird, right? So it's like it's just this whole world is upside down. It's like the opposite of how it actually is on the other side. Mm -hmm. Because from my understanding is the other side there is only love and only unconditional love for everything, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what God is. So when we come in here, we think that love is scarce. That love is just a human thing, but I mean it is. But it's what well, it's everything. Right. Yeah. And everything is, is love. And mm -hmm. there is no rules. Right. There is no. Hmm, how can I say this? There's no opposites. There is no up or down or this and that. With God, there only is. Right? Yeah. There's only love. And that's it. The mm -hmm. energy of love and experience. When we yeah. come in here, we experience duality. Right. Which is an illusion. We experience the opposite. Fear and love. Right up and down left and right you know separation the illusion of separation all of these are, are illusions right the, the um death which is an illusion so death in it of itself just the idea of dying puts fear in you right i don't want to die right i want to live i want to survive right so that that in it of itself also says that fear the energy of fear can only exist here right because of the laws and the rules of this place which again are an illusion so if the you know the more you look deeper the more you start finding that everything here is an illusion you start identifying with a multi-dimensional self instead of just your 3d self that is because your 3d self is always going to have fear because it lives here right but if you open yourself if you open your consciousness enough to where you can identify with your highest selves, right? Because there's a lot of selves that are at the higher realms, right? And you identify with these versions of you, which is the true self, you begin to understand that we come in here as a game, right? Mm. We come in here as a game to level up our character through wisdom. Um, and it is, I understand why this would be difficult for people to truly understand, you know, because of just the traumas that we, that we, are bestowed upon here when we're when we have so much trauma here yeah. um it grounds you to the 3d right and you believe that this is just life life is hard right like life is brutal life is is you only get a little bit of joy every now and then and that's mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. that's not that's not the case at all you know mm -hmm. it's just an illusion that we are participating in mm. yeah yeah man very well said yeah oh man what do you say uh, holds us back the most from seeing through the illusion? You know, what are the strongest pulls, would you say, um, into the 3D realm? The strongest pulls will always and forever be your fears. So, mm. and this comes with blockages. The, the, your fears are blockages. And this is what I teach. So, um it's it's fear of judgment, 
fear of uh, the unknown, fear of death, fear of uncertainty, anxiety, which is a form of fear, fear of the future, um, things like that, that uh, you as, especially as a child, these things get programmed in you, heavy fears, right? Like if you have a, um, you're, if like you have a dad that is abusive or a dad that is telling you that, why do you like video games or why do you like anime or whatever? Someone looking at the way at the things that you like in your heart and telling you that it's wrong, right? And with mm. bullying, like if you're in high school and you're the type of person that has like a little anime poster or whatever, and they make fun of you because of it, in your mind, you're going to be, well, maybe um, something's wrong with me, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't fit in society. So that's a fear automatically. So now you're moving out of fear. Now you're not expressing yourself fully. So that's your throat chakra right there, right? You mm -hmm. can't express yourself. So now because of that, you have this fear of judgment from society. So with, And that fear is the root chakra. So that's one of the things that I like to teach a lot too, is that in order to find your blockages, look at all your fears. All fears are connected to all blockages in your chakras. All oh, yeah, yeah. It, it makes it very simple. So I always tell people, because you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of gurus like to say, look for your heart chakra. And that's true, right? You want to connect your heart chakra. But the only way to find out the root of all problems is mm -hmm. through the root chakra, right? Yep. So you have to look at your root chakra first so you can find out all your fears. Every single fear is connected to all the blockages in your chakras. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I've never heard it put like that, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. <sighs> and 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 also too, uh, I'd like to add too that um, mm -hmm. the reason why it, this is to make it, I try to make things more simple. I try to make spirituality. I try to bring logic to spirituality, actually, just a little bit more direct, a little bit more, because logic can be used as long as you're more, in, as long as you move intuitively first, and then you can use your logic instead yes. of the other way around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you really start looking at these, at the blockages, um, it just didn't make sense to me why people would make things so incredibly complicated, right? Oh, it had to be through every single chakra. And, it's, and to me, it's like, no, you start with your fears first. If you defeat a fear, you're going to defeat the rest of the blockages in your chakras, right? Like if you, again, like if, if you have fear of judgment, then you are you don't love yourself enough to express yourself. So that's also a heart chakra blockage, right? It's very simple how it all connects. Mm -hmm. And basically what this is, is a game of fear versus love because fear is the opposite of love, right? We come in here to experience the lower three dimensions, which are an illusion. The lower three dimensions are the opposite of love, which is fear. So when we come in here, we're going to be caught up with these traumas of fear, and that's what we're that's what we're supposed to heal, which are block which are our blockages, to come back to love again. And when you move from love, whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to move with purpose, and thus magnetizing your abundance. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how do you say we dissolve our fears once we know what they are and we could see them? Um, what do we do to dissolve them in a general sense? Yes. So most fears are um, are inner child uh, work, inner child. Most fears. Um, some of them could, you you could have gotten them as well when you're an adult or in a teen, and you know it's, it's basically shadow work, right? But it, it's healing the inner child, and this is the difficult for people unless you're really in tune with like your spirituality um because when you're in tune with your spirituality and you're speaking to your guides or just having that intuition you'll it, it's a lot easier for you to separate yourself from your inner child and become the observer right mm -hmm. so or the higher self and now as the higher self in your mind you can be the parent that your inner child needed when it suffered the traumas so mm -hmm. it's it's about Finding your triggers, learning all your fears, then going to the situations that happened to you when you were a child or as a teen that put those fears in you, right? And there's a lot of situations. Now, a lot of people have trouble even remembering these things because they either block it out or they just don't remember. So it's not even just about remembering your situations. It's also about remembering the feelings, right? How did you feel? Yeah. Like, well, how did you feel when, when people are judging you? How did you feel when this and that, right? It's all about the feelings. So then now after, 
And this takes practice in meditation, becoming the observer, looking at your thoughts without identifying them. But once you're there, then you can now have an actual conversation with your inner child in your mind, right? Or you can do it through journaling, right? Which a lot of people do it through journaling as well. And from there, you ask it questions. And this is the intense part because you're going to be reliving your traumas again, right? Because mm -hmm. your inner child's going to be feeling them. Mm -hmm. So this is how you do it by basically being a counselor to your inner child, the parent, and literally caressing your inner child, telling it it's okay, holding it in your mind, right? Holding it, babying it, whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that the inner child needs. So it can be free again. Yeah. Wow, man. Mm. So it's a sort of embracing of the trauma and the fear. And we have to, the work is we have to go back to the moment, if we can remember at least, to the moment of when this fear was induced into our mind and to see that it's okay. You have to like tell yourself it's okay, right? Like a sort of parent figure, like you said. Yes, 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. I yeah. guess the problem is we don't want to go there, you know? We, got, we don't want yes. to uh, open the closet and see the skeletons in there. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the biggest problem because it's, mm. it's tough. It's very, very hard to do that, especially when you have certain traumas that, like, have affected your whole life, everything mm. that you do, right? Mm -hmm. And now, and the thing is also, there's like a, a, there's like something inside of you as well that knows if you if you go through this you're going to change and it's almost like you have a fear of change too yeah. right yeah so it's like a it's just like it kind of adds up but it, you have to be courageous honestly mm -hmm. when you're doing this you, you have to have courage you know yeah. i always tell my clients be very patient with this this is not easy stuff you, you have to be very mm -hmm. very patient mm -hmm. like if if you're going through it and you just can't you can just leave right get up stop meditating go watch a movie come back the next day yeah. it has to be very very slow and, and very very patient because you can really um it, it, if you go through it too intensely um and it's too much the trauma it's going to be difficult to even come back to it again so if it's better to just do it very very slow very very mm. patient mm. um i want to ask you this one and if you don't want to answer it's too personal i understand uh are you into psychedelics at all i am yes. okay yeah, because um, from what I know, that's what a lot of the work with psychedelics, um, that's what it's about. It's being able to embrace the trauma in a very efficient and effective way through the chemical induction of whatever it is. And it seems like psychedelics do it just, uh, I don't know, if done with the right people in the right situation, they do it very quick and very, very yeah. efficient. I don't know how else to explain it. And um, well, yeah, like these are gifts from uh, Mother Earth, right? Mm -hmm. These are gifts from from the divine feminine, which is a healing energy. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, um, when I was doing my shadow work, I would I would take cannabis and mm -hmm. cannabis helped a lot with shadow work because yeah. it highlights like, yo, you need to work on this. Right. Or it highlights, yo, like you're being you're feeling paranoia because you're feeling this right here right it's a, yeah it, it helps with that yeah. now i did also take um i don't know if it's cool to say i'll talk of about course. psychedelics oh know. yeah i'm the one that asked <laughs> all right <laughs> so um i also did take shrooms mm -hmm. shrooms is very very spiritual as well but the thing about shrooms is if you're not ready uh, mm. it can really take you there and it happened to me uh, three times already where I did a, a, a big dose and um, it was like the most intense fear of my life um, yeah. the craziest uh, experience and trip of my life yet after the experience I felt like a new person completely new person yep. like whatever was holding me here just shed off which I didn't even know was there Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't recommend it for everyone um because you can do it without psychedelics but it that's what they're for yeah honestly they're for healing yeah mm -hmm. i'm glad you mentioned cannabis as well because 
cannabis is obviously the most popular psychedelic in yes. our country, in our world. And uh, that one specifically, if you use it to your best advantage to really go within, do shadow work, meditate with it, it's very, very helpful, very effective in that way. Yes. Um, you know, just yes. a lot of people, I'm not judging, I'm just saying from what I witnessed, don't use it in that way. We use it to watch movies eat food, listen to music, yeah. which that's cool. That could be a meditation in itself. But if you just yeah. use it specifically for meditation and for growth, cannabis yeah. can definitely help you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what I do, um, I like to ask uh, the spirit of marijuana, right? Right before I, I, mm. I do it, you know, I'll light up a candle because I'm not going to lie. I use it recreationally too. You know, I'll, I'll play, yeah. I'll play some, some video games a little bit and then mm -hmm. usually uh, recreationally I, I like to enjoy my 3d experience as well right I like <laughs> nothing wrong with human, that you know mm -hmm. <laughs> but um but when it's time to be serious about my evolution i'll light up a candle i'll ask the spirit of the divine feminine mother gaia and uh spirit of of the cannabis to help with healing and connection and shadow work and and right away right away right when i take the hit boom right away i'm already mm -hmm. channeling and i'm already i'm doing all these crazy <laughs> things you know yep. So it, it's it's about um, respecting what it's for, yeah. right? Respecting what it's for and having honor towards it as well. Um, and when you have honor towards it, it's an energy, right? It, it's like it's like the samurais, right? Everything is honorable, right? It's it's an energy that you're giving the plant and you're connecting with it because honor is also a form of love, right? So it's like connecting with the plant and being able being able to get to that place that you need that when you were sober, you probably couldn't get to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Honoring it as a sacrament. Yep. Yes. 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 hundred percent. I do believe they are sacraments. Truly. Yes. Um, especially back in the day, back in, in the tribal days, I think they were almost used as a rite of passage. Yeah. I know that many shamans would use it. Many, many shamans because sh you know, I mean, there's a lot of differences between, like, let's say a shaman or a wizard or anything like that. Now, I like to call myself all those things. I like to call myself <laughs> a wizard, a shaman, a healer, mm -hmm. you know, uh, an alchemist. You know, that's my main thing, I guess, is because I am an alchemist, right? Yeah. But um, I like to call myself all those things because as a wizard, um, it's more, to me, a wizard is more like the mind. To me, it's like a, a master of the mind, you know, mm. being able to connect thoughts with other thoughts knowing where these thoughts are coming from and how they're all connected with the universe right where the shaman um is more like channeling energy right channeling energy to help with either healing or if you're a bad shaman i guess with the opposite right mm -hmm. but yeah like and i i like to call myself all of these things man <laughs> all the above <laughs> yeah. yeah i like that at the end of the day they're just labels yeah yeah yes we're correct. all just labels yeah, i i like to think we're uh we're all a shaman you know we're all a wizard yeah. yes it's true it, it, you're you're absolutely correct because um anybody can do what what any what any of us are doing with you know intuition or everybody has these gifts mm -hmm. everyone everyone has all of these gifts there's no one that's better when people call people ascended masters, it's just um, uh, souls with more experience, but it doesn't mean that they're better or anything. It's just that that is their experience right now, that they are the ascended master, right? And that, mm -hmm. that's just an experience right? because, again, there is no one that's better or worse. Everything has, everything comes in perfect divine timing. Yep. So, yeah, like, and, and, you know, that's something I tell uh, my followers as well, and I like to tell my clients. Like I, I'm not special. Nobody's special. Just because I have a lot of followers on YouTube doesn't mean anything. You know, I'm still like everyone else that has just that's just realized his abilities because it was time for me to realize the abilities. Right. Yeah. Yep. You know, when someone, you know, if anyone's watching this, like whoever is going through maybe even a dark night of the soul or anything like that, if and you feel like you're not progressing, just you have to trust in the timing. Because everyone has their own timing for their own journey, right? You cannot be comparing yourself to others that you feel are more advanced, but they're also going through their own ups and downs and things like that. 
Mm-hmm. So it's always best to just be focusing on, on yourself and your own progression and write down too. Like it's very important to write down when you overcame something. Like, well, today I, I had a Kundalini and my intuition is higher now. You know, write these things down because mm-hmm. you're going to go through another low again. You know, it's just a part of the duality in this place. You're going to go through another low yeah. and the fear will get to you and it will tell you things like you're never going to go back to the light again. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so you have to remind yourself of the wins that you have during that low time, right? And I think even now we're kind of experiencing some type of low at this moment with the collective. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's a collective dark night of the soul. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, though, that leads us to the light. You know, I think that's really what it's all about. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. 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 I think all our suffering, all our trauma, all our woes eventually will bring us all to this bliss, Sat Chit Ananda, truth, consciousness, bliss, whatever you want to call it, man. I think it's all for a reason. It's all part of the plan, you know? Yes, yes, uh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it might be hard to say because there is a lot of suffering and we're in our comfortable houses right now. <laughs> but I don't know, with the keen eye, with the right perspective on things, you can see that it, all just makes sense. I don't know. It, it's more so like this inner discernment that comes about that says there's a plan no matter what. And not even looking on the outside darkness, like the inside darkness, somehow with enough um, practice, with enough, um, how do I put this, tapping into oneself, that discernment will lead the way throughout whatever darkness comes about in your life and uh yes. yeah just follow that i say just follow yeah. that and uh that discernment is ultimately your higher self that guides you through it and it's always there always will be always is yeah. and uh yeah hallelujah to that <laughs> yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. yeah that that's why i say like uh no matter where you're at you can always find peace in your soul always yeah yeah man that is a miracle it really is and yeah. It might seem crazy to somebody who doesn't know any better. And I understand, yeah. but I don't know. Once you feel it, you don't unfeel it. That's the thing. Like once you kind of yeah. get the glimpse, it's like Yeah, you you're not coming you're not going back. You're not going back. Yeah. <laughs> there's no going back. And you know, it's funny because you did say like there's people there's a lot of people suffering. And of course we want to have empathy and we wanna, you know, we I'm always grateful for for my life because my life could have been much worse, right? Of course. Yep. Mm-hmm. But at you know through understanding you will and this is hard for people to um, to get but through understanding you will see that everything comes in like we said perfect timing so everyone has their own experience through their own cycles that their soul chose so even if you're suffering unfortunately you know not i mean it's not even unfortunate it's just you put yourself there so you can learn a, a certain type of lesson for yourself and through evolution. So everyone that is going through something right now, it's because their soul chose it to experience so they can come back with a certain level of perception or, or wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. So yes, we should always have empathy. Of course, empathy is what, you know, helps with the collective rising of the consciousness of, you know, of course we want to have compassion for others. But we also must understand too because this was something that I was going through as well, that, well, how can I be a spiritual person and have my abundance when others are suffering, right? Yeah. It was almost like, why do I deserve this, right? But of course, I, of course I deserve this. Everyone deserves to have their abundance when it is time for them to yeah. have their abundance because their soul chose. So this is the, the difficult part about, about this because it's almost like a paradox, right? It's like, well, then that means you're a selfish person because you want to have your abundance, yet other people are not. But it's like, it is because in the other time, there's no, in, in the other side, time is an illusion. So everyone has already gotten their abundance. Mm-hmm. It already happened. It's just, you're just playing catch up right now, mm-hmm. whichever life that you're, that you're living on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> it all makes sense in the context of multiple lives as well. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. I feel like without the sense of reincarnation, which I do believe is real, um, 
this whole spiritual path doesn't make as much sense. Um, but when you do tie it into that, karma makes a lot more sense. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's not even cope because I'm afraid to die. One could look at it like that. But it's yeah. not that. It's actually just seems like more of the truth, I feel. The more I go within, the more reincarnation is almost obvious. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, I mean, what from my understanding and my own knowing, it's definitely real because I've had many past life memories and visions and things like that that just come to me, when, especially when I'm in a very deep meditation. Yeah. Um, and they feel so incredibly real. Yeah. And a lot of them, it's just, it was mostly trauma, honestly. Um, that's what I, I would remember from past life, which is mostly trauma. Right. Mm. So that's how I know that we all suffer, right, in different lives. I do believe that we come in cycles in this universe, meaning we come in not just to experience one life, but a multitude of lives. And in this life or cycle that we come in with, we are going to go down and then up, meaning we're going to be pure and then do probably do bad things. And, you know, when you do bad things, you put that energy out there, you're going to you're going to get it back. Right. That's the whole point of, of this universe that we're in. So that's what we call, I guess, you don't want to call it karma. Right. Mm. But um, and so you're going to relive, you're going to live your karma until you go back up again. And that's the fallen angel ascend type of thing like that's the cycle mm. right on angel and you come back and you ascend again mm. and that's that's the whole game in this construct or universe or experience however you want to call it you know, yeah. that's my understanding of it. Yeah. yeah cycles cycles of light and dark yeah you can see that interesting take yeah yeah i don't know i mean at the end of the day, it is a game, though. I do feel like this is the greatest game ever invented. It's very yeah. good graphics, uh, very good storyline. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it feels like some kind of simulation, as they say. That's the popular uh, buzzword, simulation theory. Yes. It's like more than a simulation. It's hard to explain, man. It's um, I don't know, man. It is some kind of game, though, which is what is a game for? You know, why do we play games? It's for experience, like we said. Yeah. what more yeah, do you for, play for a game fun. for for fun for exactly fun. <laughs> contrary to popular belief we're supposed to enjoy this <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah i mean just look at how a child comes in to this world right a mm -hmm. child is the closest to a soul because yeah. a, a soul or a piece of god is always looking to have fun so a child comes in without the traumas you know especially if it's in a with a good family and things like that um it's just looking to have fun, looking to explore, looking to like experience, like you said, right? Yet over time we become, you know, adults and we forget that magic, right? We forget yep. that that light and that that fun because of, you know, the programming that society has bestowed upon us. But mm -hmm. and you know, that's the thing about being spiritual is that we gotta come back to that again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come come back to the light again. That's what Jesus said, man. Unless you become like children, you never enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, man, yeah. that's a quote I always remember, and it makes so much sense, man. Yeah. And it's not um to be childish; it's to be childlike. Yes. There's a big difference, yeah. you know. Very it's true. Not to be naive, like a child, but to be very, you know, like you said, playful, very yeah. curious, uh, very yeah. pure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Kids all have like the same spirit, you know. Like a kid is a kid yeah. for the most part. They yeah. all have their little different knacks, but when, it's hard to explain, but we yeah. all know a kid, you know, and they all yeah. have that same like personality. And I think it is coming back, all of us, in all of our differences, to come back to that childlike spirit that we all share. Yeah. I think it is that simple. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. Yeah, man. hundred percent. Yeah. I feel that big difference yeah. between childish and childlike. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, man. Because I feel like um, it's a fine line too. Because um, if you are selfish in a way, you know, if you don't outgrow the ego, you it is childlike in that way. It is yeah. like being naive. I'm yes. sorry. I'm sorry. It's childish. I misspoke. It's childish. Yes. yes. 
when if you are more in tune with yourself the higher self it's more yeah. child like <laughs> yeah you know yeah mm. yeah yeah man yeah and that, and i guess that through understanding the through the experience of being here long enough then you can return to being childlike but at the same time not have that naivety that that mm -hmm. a child may have so it's almost like you're matured enough to where now you can be a child again with that yeah. level of maturity yeah, yeah. exactly so it's like duality i mean it's basically duality is what we're experiencing here yeah, mm. because of that mm. yeah i have this experience where i see people as kids sometimes really it's kind of humbling you know mm. when i see somebody doing their thing and they got you know nice clothes a nice car or they're putting on this show sometimes i try to imagine them as a little kid just playing around with diapers on or even just like a newborn baby because that's all yeah. of us all every single one of us was at that point and it's in us it's not only that we were that point like that we are that yeah we, we are that, are right that. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah. so i don't know i feel like that's a good exercise yeah. I don't know why, but I feel it's helpful for me to like see people as children, even the, I was going to say ugliest people, but I meant like even the dark, like the people that you call an mm -hmm. asshole, I guess, like try yeah. to look at, look past the appearance of that and look at them just as a pure kid. Yeah. I feel like it's yeah. helpful in that Very way. True. I mean, you're, what you're doing there by, by just doing that is you're tapping into their inner child. By just yeah. imagining them, you're, that's you're literally because everything is telepathic, right? Mm. So by looking at someone, you're connecting with them, and now you're just tapping into their inner child by seeing them as their child. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, you're 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 you're, you're putting you're going into their field basically and seeing them as a child, which is a beautiful perspective to have because you're right. You know, you know, there's a lot of people that do bad things, and you can feel it. I can feel it when someone is like, wow, this guy's aura is intense, you know? Yep. Got, mm -hmm. got some darkness here, right? Mm -hmm. Yet you can always, if you have a good level of perception, you can always find the, the light in there. even, And you could even see, uh, wow, that's why he acts this way because he's got so much trauma probably, right? Yeah, He's been through so much things. This is why he acts this way. And he's just basically protecting his inner child by doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own story. It's about, and this is where compassion and empathy comes in, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about the spirit of children as well. Usually, all kids get along on the playground for the most part. I mean, I know there might be yeah. some, you know, tantrums thrown and some mini fights, but for the most part, you throw five kids in the playground, they're going to figure out something to do, a game to play, and just get along with each other. So I think um, in yeah. that way, the childlike spirit is helpful as well because it's like you're inevitably yeah. just going to get along with the person. And I'm not saying like you have to be around people that are have dense energy, that have dark energy. It's actually probably better to be passive in that way and don't associate yourself with that. I'm not yes. saying you have to forgive everybody. Um, yes. But it helps to the ones that you shouldn't avoid, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's, yeah. It helps to be with, and those those people are few and far between, the ones that we should avoid, let's be honest. Like, for the most yeah. part, everyone is a pretty decent soul. So it just helps to be, uh, it helps to be a better kid on the playground in this thing we call life. You know, it yeah. just helps to be more conducive to a better experience for others, I feel. And to look at yeah. others with a, as a kid in, in a certain way, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's just a weird, maybe I'm weird like that. Maybe I just had a weird meditative experience in that way, but no, it helps sometimes. I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you, brother. That Because, I mean, that's a great way to look at life, right? And, you know, I was watching the other day, I was watching uh, this guy named Peter Bond on YouTube. And he's like uh, one of those guys that gives like money to homeless people and he makes videos about it. But when he goes to these uh, to the homeless people, he comes back to them again because he starts like a GoFundMe, right, for that person. And um, there was this one guy that he gave, I think he gave 500 bucks to, and he came back to him to talk to him. And the guy said, man, it wasn't even the, the, the money that, that helped me. Of course it helped me, but it was just your words. 
like like mm. hope right hope oh, wow. and, and faith and and so it's like what he did what that guy basically did in the spiritual was um bring out his inner child again bring out his his higher self again or match himself with his highest self that gave him hope again because he was the homeless guy was in such low dimensions mm -hmm. when you came and you bring a little bit of hope by just a few words right like mm. you're, you're gonna make it you're gonna be okay we love you right just by saying small things like that yeah, or man. by even viewing people like you said like as you know as a soul as a child right by viewing them that way you you're gonna act in in that way towards them they're gonna feel it even mm -hmm. if it's like if they don't notice it or they're not aware of it their soul feels it right yeah and yeah that would be that's just enough right even just a couple words is yeah. enough to get people's spirits back up seriously yeah seriously yeah. it's um quite simple in that way as well and um yeah. it's very actually easy in that way because we're all capable of doing that we all have to get along with each other here to a certain extent and um yeah sometimes all you have to do is ask somebody how they're doing maybe hold the door for somebody uh i don't know say thank you please yeah. just be a genuine good person in all of our goings yeah. on of being a human yeah. here and i think that is how we create a better world you don't have to like be a grand inventor you don't have to have a podcast you don't have to write a book you don't have to do anything grandiose to be honest with you you just gotta be whatever it is in your life you just gotta be a, a decent person to another person and what does that entail well seeing a little bit of yourself in the other person that's it yeah. just you know, seeing that they have shit going on in their life too and yeah. whatever you can do you don't have to give 500 dollars to them could yeah you could that might help but <laughs> yeah. it's really that might not even be that important like was yeah. said in your story it might just be somebody might just need um you know i was gonna say a shoulder to cry on or the they might yeah. just need to be listened to for a little bit um yeah simple yeah. things like that just connecting to each other and uh yeah, yeah man it might sound corny <laughs> might sound corny and we've probably all heard it before but it's the truth like just to make somebody's day a little bit better just by being there for them yeah could move mountains man in someone's yeah. life yeah 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 the that's not things. corny bro <laughs> no okay no <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah it's just the little things man it's just the little things yeah. in our life that really make a big difference yeah it's very true um I don't know. Sometimes I need a reminder. I'm glad you said it. I'm glad we're talking yeah. about that. I'm glad that we're here talking about this whole thing. But um, yeah, sometimes I just need a reminder to come yeah. back to that essence, the simple essence, because it's so simple to do that, right? And I think we can all relate. Anyone that's listening, we can all relate to that. You yeah, hundred percent. I, I, I'm, you know, I gotta do something. Like, I gotta do that as well. Because mm -hmm. I do forget as well. I'm, we're still human, man. We still have yep. our stresses. We still have the things that we got to do and things mm -hmm. like that. So we forget, you know, it, it happens. But it's good to remind ourselves every now and then. You know, and then you said also, um, you, you see yourself in them, right? Yeah. Well, that's Christ consciousness right there, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what this whole path leads to, right? You know, we do the work. We work through our stuff that we got going on um clean the cupboards of our closet a little bit you know work 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 in progress you know and yeah. then eventually we get to a point where you realize that you have a divine spark in you right um mm -hmm. but inevitably what comes along the way i feel is uh well you see the divine spark in other people <laughs> yeah right you realize yeah. that you're god but uh hold on a second everybody else is too and yeah. uh yeah. yeah and then i think that's like the next step like that's the next yeah. stage is uh yeah. sort of servitude i feel in my life is a uh, minor maybe major obligatory mm -hmm. servitude toward others yeah. um yeah. yeah do you feel the same absolutely absolutely yeah. just by even just just by even just talking about what we're like what we're doing right now now and you know having a podcast or or just creating content 
um, we're just spreading awareness, right? Mm -hmm. And and again, you don't have to agree with everything that I say. Whoever watches my content, you don't have to agree with because I say a lot of a lot of things. I say a lot of things that are my truth, right? But you don't have to agree with any like any of that. But it's more about just um, understanding that we're all God, right? All of mm -hmm. us are 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 part of the collective consciousness that is the super consciousness, which is God, right? And we're all just here to experience pretending that we're not, you know? Yep. <laughs> all God and drag, as Ram Dass says. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I don't need to know what else to say. That's, that's the truth, man. Yeah. That's the game. Yeah. Yep. How did how did your uh, spiritual awakenings go about? I'm curious. Uh, I never know how to answer that question, man. Yeah. I mean, it all stemmed from uh, a lack of feeling good in life, you could say, you know, mental suffering, mental ailments, mm -hmm. mental health issues. So mm -hmm. somehow one way or the other came across that meditation might be helpful. <laughs> for <laughs> depression anxiety and so forth yeah so started to meditate because of that and um not only did it help my mental health i've come to realize that it also allowed me to see myself differently and i think they play hand in hand i think me seeing myself differently seeing the greater self with a capital s is what helped me see through the illusions of my depression, anxiety, and so forth, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it was just a basic, and the sages say this, it was just the basic suffering, not basic suffering, I don't know, it was just suffering that led me yeah. down this path. And uh, yeah, so in that way, I see the suffering as grace, you know? Yeah. So um, yeah, it was just the, yeah, man, Beautiful. I think a lot of people are on that wavelength is... Uh, starts with there's got to be another way there's got to yeah. be something else to life there's got to be another way to find happiness if you even want to call it happiness yeah and, uh, i think that's for the most part not everybody but i think that's what gets us on the path is, yeah uh there's got to be another way same yeah. to you yeah same i mean yeah. you nailed it right on you, you nailed it when you said that you are almost glad that you went through the suffering mm. Because mm -hmm. it's like evolution, right? It's the same thing with myself. For almost like a decade, I was just severely depressed. And it would it was like in waves, right? Sometimes I would be happy, of course, you know. But there was like a period in my life where it was every day um, for like about almost half a year, every day of just severe low vibes, right? Really, really low. Yeah. But, you know, now when I look back at my life, and I see, I'm like, that is necessary. That was mm -hmm. necessary. I had to go through that because I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Like, not even close. I would mm -hmm. probably have been somewhere else, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm, I'm glad I went through that, you know, in hindsight. I'm glad. Amen. Yeah, man. And I wouldn't even uh, believe that I'd say the G word, God, or spirituality. In that same phase that I was quite depressed, I'll say it. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe there was any purpose, meaning to life, quite nihilistic, atheistic. Oh, just very bleak, very bleak, man. Yeah, low vibes, as you said. Yeah. And, I was uh, the same, uh, I was the yeah. same, bro. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even three years ago, probably, I'll say like four or five years ago, I didn't think there was a God, you know? I didn't, yeah. you know, I, I didn't, spirituality, that's, you're delusional right mm -hmm. but i mean after my spiritual awakening i had the most massive ego death you know yeah who i was like well i guess spirituality is real you know yeah. <laughs> the craziest ego death ever because i was always against it you know for yeah. the longest of time you know mm. yeah. yeah man it's grace that we're able to go through it and yeah. uh come through to the other side and be able to realize that it was grace even though it wasn't in the moment we didn't realize it in the moment but uh yeah i think our suffering does bring us to god the sages say that man 
the old school sages that I talked about before, they yeah. say there's really no other way. I mean, maybe there are other ways, but I think that is the way for most of us is the suffering is what leads us out of the suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very true. I mean, that's what makes you an alchemist, right? Mm. Everyone's an alchemist, especially if you're a spiritual person. I mean, all you're doing is turning, you know, lead into gold, which is code for turning your internal blockages for to enlightenment, basically, right? Yeah. Connecting your chakras and opening your crown chakra for, for enlightenment. So, yeah, yeah 100%. Mm. Yep. That's the path alchemy yeah i'm surprised i didn't ask you about that um but we already described alchemy i'm pretty sure yeah. <laughs> um yeah man um let me ask you this one where do you see yourself in your work in the future from here you know do you have any plans that you'd want to reveal to me and anybody listening and what you're going to be doing it's a good question um honestly right now I'm just kind of following whatever my higher self and what my guides are telling me to do. Mm -hmm. And my whole life I've been following people and it's never worked out, but I've been following myself now mm. and it's working out. Right. Yeah. So I guess a, a guess would be, um, I do know that I'm going to receive much more abundance because that is what I'm being told that's going to happen. I do know that, um, I do see myself speaking like I always get visions of, you know, future visions of me speaking in front of a crowd. Wow. Well, maybe that'll happen. Something like that. But it, I don't try to see, you know, I don't try to look exactly what I'm going to do or what I'm going to manifest or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not that type of person to be manifesting like that. I just kind of go along with the plan that my higher self has for me. And he says that you're going to receive much more abundance and you're going to be speaking to a lot more people. So hopefully that's, that's true because I want to, uh, I want to help as many people as I can, because I know that the universe will bring me the right people at the right time. Mm -hmm. So I can, you know, help them in whatever it is that, that they need help on, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's where I see myself just more abundance basically. Yeah. Well, I think you can and will, man. Uh, I can tell you're very in tune with yourself and uh, you're very well spoken. So, yeah, definitely. I feel as though you have a very bright future ahead of you. And, um, yeah, I don't know. You're very relatable, you know, very down to earth, I feel like, with the whole spirituality thing, uh, because that can be very like lofty and woo woo, as they say. But I feel like yeah. you're just very real. So yeah. real, recognized, real, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, you're right, man. You, and I don't like that, by the way. I don't like to... Don't get me wrong. I can get a little woo-woo sometimes, too, you know? I can get a little, <laughs> yes. you know, like, out there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's usually when I'm clearing my energy and, and, you know, working with energy. But, yeah, I want to bring logic to spirituality. Mm -hmm. I want to bring rationality. I want to bring... Uh, I want to make it easier for people to understand. Because it, there's just so many people saying different things. Some of them contradict each other. Some mm. of them say these things. Now, even the things that I say can contradict what people say. Because there's people that say that there's demons eating your louche or whatever, you know. Yeah. yeah. And but what I say, it's like, that's an illusion. You know, that's a construct of the mind because you're a manifester. So technically, you're manifesting that. By saying that, you're manifesting that. But, you know, everyone has their own. Their, their, their own ways of viewing spirituality so i'm not here to convince anyone on how my spirituality is better or more truth it's more about healing yourself man it's more about healing yourself yeah and um being able to understand yourself and and, and know that even if you disagree with let's say you or me or whatever we're still in this journey together right i'm yeah. still a human and we're all on this journey together and we're all going to rise to the top, baby. You know, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, hey, man, I think that's a really good note to wrap this thing up at. Um, yeah. We're all going to rise to the top. Uh, do you have anything uh, else that you want to say or you want to keep it at that? <sighs> Not much. Nothing else to say. I think we said everything that needed to be said. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. 
awesome talk. You're an awesome guy. Um, I wish you all Thanks the best in your endeavors. And uh, that's it, man. I'll link everything down below for anybody that listened this long. Check you out. And that's it. Keep on keeping on. Awesome, man. Thank you for inviting me. This was a, a wonderful experience. And love and light, my brother. All right? Love and light. Peace and love. Thank right. you very much. Peace and love to anybody that listened. See ya.